uh, I, today I'll be speaking about uh, prevention and the basics of treatment of heart disease. Now, you look at if you look at any newspaper, any health column, or any health uh, program in television, uh, there's a lot of data which is uh, available on prevention of heart disease. So I won't bore you with uh, this repeating the same thing again and again. But uh, when I interact with uh, my patients or the patients at Inland, there are a lot of uh, you know, misconceptions about uh, a few uh, issues and uh, so I would like to just discuss the facts and myths about the common, uh, uh, common data in the prevention and treatment of heart disease. So my talk will basically be just to stimulate a discussion and then we can have an interactive uh, session. Okay. So first of all, uh, Uh, to understand what the uh, heart disease is uh, like, uh, I think the basic structure of the heart should be understood. This is how a normal heart looks. If you open the chest and see, this is how the normal uh, heart looks. And the size of the heart is almost the size of a fist. So you have people who are, who are big, people who are small in terms of uh, you know, physical structure. The size of the heart also varies according uh, to that. And if you cut open the heart and see, this is what you see. Heart is basically made up of four chambers. So there are two chambers on the right side and there are two chambers on the uh, left side. And the heart is basically made up of muscle. You see the walls of the heart, they are made up of uh, muscle. So what happens is the blood from the various parts of the body will reach the right side of the heart. This is called the atrium. And from there the blood comes into the lower chamber, this is called the ventricle. And then this pumps blood to the um, lungs. Lungs purify the blood, that means they uh, oxygenate the blood and put it back onto the left side of the heart. And the left side uh, blood vessels called coronary arteries. And in between the chamber, there are doors. Uh, so these doors are called the valves. So these are the ba this is the basic structure of the heart. So when there is a heart problem, you can have problem of any of these structures. So any of the structures can get affected to create, uh, to produce heart problems. Now among all the heart diseases, the most common one and uh, the, the one which we are all more uh, scared about is the uh, blockages in the heart blood circulation. So as I told you, there are three blood vessels which supply the heart. So development of blockages in the blood vessels which supply the heart muscle, that's called the coronary artery disease. And that's the one which leads to the heart attacks and uh, the common problems what we see. Uh, about 80% of the cases which we see are coronary artery disease uh, patients. So what happens here? See, basically these coronary arteries are the arteries which supply blood to the heart muscle. They're basically like this. This is how when you cut open, you see normally like this. Now this has got a smooth lining, so the blood flows inside the blood vessels. Now, when there is a deposit of cholesterol within the blood vessel wall, the lumen of this gets narrowed. Now, as it keeps increasing, um, as the deposit keeps increasing, uh, there is narrowing of the blood vessel. This is what we commonly call uh, blockages in the heart uh, blood circulation. And uh, on top of this blood cholesterol, uh, uh, on top of this cholesterol deposition, there can be sudden blood clot formation, and that leads to complete shutdown of the blood vessel. So this is what produces a heart attack. So basically, deposition of cholesterol within the blood vessel walls, leading to narrowing of the blood vessels, uh, is called the coronary artery disease. Now, as long as there is some flow which is going through the blood vessels, the heart muscle won't get damaged. We may experience symptoms. When we walk, we may feel chest pain or breathlessness. But uh, still, since the blood circulation is there, there is no damage done to the heart. But when there is a sudden blood clot formation on top of this cholesterol, which can happen within few minutes or few seconds, and there is a sudden shutdown of the blood circulation to a particular area of the heart, that is what uh, produces uh, heart attack and damage to the heart muscle. So there is a difference between a heart pain and a heart uh, attack. Now, heart attack is the most dreaded form of uh, coronary artery disease because that can uh, kill people. So what are the symptoms which we experience when we have this coronary artery disease? First thing, there may be people who have blocks, but they may experience no symptoms at all. So silent uh, heart disease can be there. 
or sometimes there can be chest pain which is more on exercise. Uh, in a few individuals, it may present directly with a heart attack. There is no prior heart problem, patient suddenly comes with a heart attack. And some individuals, there may be no symptoms at all. The patient might just collapse like that and then that can lead to uh, loss of life. So these are all the different uh, presentations of uh, coronary artery disease. Now, um, now the common myth, which uh, I mean most of us, we feel that heart attacks are, uh, are the blockages which develop in the heart blood vessels happen at an uh, elderly uh, age group uh, as the age increases. But if you look at the uh, data, the deposition of the cholesterol within the blood vessel wall starts as early as two years of life. So that means our lifestyle or our kids' lifestyle, um, that's what lays the foundation to development of these uh, blockages. So irrespective of whatever is our age, uh, I think even the, 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 the lifestyle which we have in, uh, in the childhood also, that also matters in terms of development of the heart problems. And this development of block increases as the age increases. Uh, but modification of lifestyle is uh, very important. So our kids and all, it's better to encourage them to have an active uh, lifestyle. Now, why should we be worried about this heart disease? How are Indians different from, say, the other uh, people in the world? The first thing is, genetically, we Indians are more susceptible to develop uh, heart problems. If you compare with Americans, we have 3.4 times more higher risk of developing uh, heart problems. Uh, if you compare with Chinese, six times more. Japanese, compared with Japanese, we have 20 times more. So we are, we Indians, genetically are predisposed to heart attacks. And second thing is, this heart problem occurs at a much younger age compared to the rest of the world. In uh, in, in Indians, it occurs five to ten years uh, before uh, the other, uh, compared with the other. Uh, uh, countries like if it happens at the age of 60 uh, in the other countries it happens at 50 in our uh, country. So we are uh, susceptible for heart disease at a younger age group. And uh, the uh, severity of the disease is also much more in Indians compared to the rest of the world. And uh, the number of deaths we see because of heart attacks when there is a heart attack is much higher in Indians compared to the rest of the world. So it is very important uh, that we prevent a heart disease. That is uh, very uh, important. Now, what increases the heart risk? Very often uh, we see uh, patients who have heart problems who come and say, Doctor, I have a very healthy lifestyle, but yet I have a heart problem. So, what causes uh, heart disease? Now, most of them, my talk is focused more on the coronary artery disease because that's the most common problem. Now, there are some things which we can't help. In the sense that as the age increases, the chance of developing a heart problem increases. So beyond the age of uh, 55, uh, we are more prone or susceptible to develop a heart problem. And uh, male are more common, uh, more, more likely to have heart problem compared to uh, female. So male uh, itself is, uh, gender of the individual itself is one of the risk factors. And third most important thing is the family history. If you have people in our families, our own first line relatives or second line relatives who have heart problems at a younger age, means below the age of uh, 55, then that itself is a risk factor for developing heart problems. I'm not talking about development of heart disease when somebody or grandmother had heart problem at 80 years. That's not, uh, uh, that's not a risk factor. But if they have below the age of 55, that's a risk factor for developing heart disease. And uh, there are some things which are modifiable. So these things are not in our control. But uh, there are things like this which can be modified. So the common risk factors include high cholesterol, smoking, uh, high blood pressure, and diabetes, uh, obesity, physical inactivity, and uh, the stress factor. So these are the things which are modifiable uh, uh, risk factors for heart disease. Now some of the common things about uh, cholesterol, we keep hearing this word cholesterol very frequently. What is cholesterol? Basically, it's, it's a vital component which is present in our blood. We require it in our body because to synthesize the cell membrane, uh, this cholesterol is required. So it is required for manufacturing cells within our uh, body. But the problem will only be if there is too much of cholesterol. If there is an excessive cholesterol, that, that deposits within the vessel wall and uh, produces the heart, heart problem. Now, one common uh, question which most people say is when we check the cholesterol, a lot of people have this concept that uh, it's, uh, I mean, 
somebody who is lean will have normal cholesterol, somebody who is obese will have a high cholesterol level. Now what is important here is um, two thirds of our cholesterol is produced within our body which is genetically determined. So you may find people who genetically have a higher cholesterol levels. Only one third of the cholesterol comes from the uh, diet which we um, eat.